Okay, first video of the year. So, am I gonna kick things off with some poorly made piece of crap that deserves to be made fun of? Nope! I'm gonna do a good cult movie that deserves more attention. I'm still gonna make wisecracks, of course, but that's just because I'm an asshole and not because the movie actually deserves it. Hardware is a 1990 British-American sci-fi movie from South African filmmaker Richard Stanley, who's probably best known for being the original director of the 1996 Island of Dr. Moreau movie, before being fired for, uh, let's say, creative differences. Knowing that the odds were stacked against me, I resorted to witchcraft. Well, we've all been there. I still haven't cleaned up all the goat's blood I had to spill to get Der Spiegel to mention me a few years ago. Seriously though, if you haven't seen the documentary about Richard Stanley's involvement with the Moreau remake, watch it. It is fascinating. Hardware's release had some controversy around it since the MPAA initially gave it an X rating, and in their defense, the movie is a little gorier than something like Rodan. Then again, they probably should have expected this from a movie described by Fangoria magazine as Cyberpunk meets Evil Dead, which is actually not a bad description now that I think about it. Normally I'd say this production company is promising too much, but in this case, it's actually pretty accurate. Also, I'm not sure if this quote is from the Bible or Pinhead. Could be both, actually. So here's our actors for the movie, as well as a guy who hopefully didn't force any of them to watch him shower. Anyway, the movie takes place in a post-apocalyptic future that kinda looks like an awesome 90s music video. Say what you want about Richard Stanley, but the guy knows how to use scenery, or lack of it anyway, to his advantage in a movie. Yeah, just keep looking, pal. I'm sure Tank Girl's around here somewhere. I'm not exactly sure who this guy is, but one advantage to following Jawa Sandcrawler Sometimes they leave behind droid parts you can sell for scrap. Oh, and did I mention Iggy Pops in this movie? Sort of. This is Angry Bob, the man with the industrial dick, coming at you loud and clear on WAR Radio. As for the good news, there is no fucking good news! You know, even if Iggy Pop didn't make it in music, he could have had a successful career in talk radio. So let's rock with one of our golden oldies! I will say, it is a little cheap of him to play his own music, though. Anyway, our main characters are Moses, played by Dylan McDermott, and Shades, played by I coulda swore this was Adrian Brody, but apparently I was wrong. Moe's a soldier who just got back from off-world looking to make some extra money. I'm not sure how much he's gonna get for this junk, though, considering the world seems to be full of it in the future. But hey, maybe Mr. Demon Hobo here can help him out. Where's the little man? Well, this guy seems trustworthy. The Nomad sells him the leftover robot parts he found in the desert. Eh, attach these to a leftover real doll and I'm sure somebody will fuck it. However, Moses seems to have trouble selling the parts himself. This is junk. Now what are you gonna do with it? It's Christmas Eve, Elvie. God damn it, I should have saved this for a Christmas episode. Eh, well, whatever. Close enough. You should know that. You used to be an elf, didn't you? Hey, come on, that's not fair. He used to be a Nelwyn. Mo sells the robot parts but keeps the head for himself. He's got the rest of the real doll back home. Okay, actually he kept the head to give as a present to his girlfriend Jill, played by Stacy Travis. Alright, she was hoping for spa tickets, but I guess a discarded T-1000 head'll do. Before Mo gets there though, Jill's gotta finish cosplaying as Robert Ginty in The Exterminator 2. Oh shit, it's worse than I thought. In the future, the world becomes the opening to Wicked City. Hopefully things aren't as rapey, but I'm not getting my hopes up. Oh well, tell us more about the future, Iggy. Hey, hey, folks! Rise and shine! Ah! I send this message of holiday cheer to all of you in range of my voice. Kill! 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 I don't think that's Iggy Pop doing an impression of a talk radio host. I think that's just how he normally talks. And did I mention Iggy's not the only rock star in this movie? Used to be okay down there, you know that? Used to be you could walk down here anytime. Nowadays, you need a gun all the time. Holy shit, Alice Cooper's in this movie? You guys like music? Check these guys out. Again, it's a little cheap to just play your own band, but it's Lemmy, so I'll let it slide. Still though, what kind of jackass just randomly pimps out his own bands? 
Also, I'm just gonna point something else out. The budget for this movie was only about one and a half million dollars, which even in 1990 wasn't a whole lot of money, yet it manages to create a post-apocalyptic future that's both more stylish and more believable than a lot of movies with several times that budget. You hear that, Hollywood? Movies don't need a budget the size of a small country's GDP to look cool. I would say Jill's apartment is a little messy, but she's an artist, so this is about average. Anyway, let's see what Jill thinks of her present. It's horrible. <laughs> There's a reaction that says, uh, I asked for a rabbit vibrator, but sure, this, this is nice. Just kidding, she loves it. And she's gonna prove it to Mo with a sexy montage. Unfortunately for these two, I think the robot head might be watching him have sex. And it's not the only one. Mo, that's it, baby. Take that big dick. Yes. That's it, baby. You got him now. God, you're beautiful. Yeah, that's it, baby. Ugh, why do I get the feeling this is what Stacy Travis's audition process for the Weinstein brothers was like? By the way, you may recognize this actor from Death Machine, another killer robot movie I've done on my show. So if it makes you feel any better, he's probably gonna die horribly before this movie's over. Anyway, Jill's gonna need to rehydrate after all that lovemaking. Mmm, lactoplasm. Made from freshly milked ghosts. Well, let's see what's on TV. So, apparently Ministry is still around in the future. Hey, I'm cool with that. Okay, look, Jill, you can paint the robot head however you like, but this thing is still not going to be able to replace Chris Evans as Captain America. Even if Moses likes Jill's artwork, there is one important area where they disagree. Did you hear about that new population bill they're trying to put through? They're trying to stop people from having kids in the next few years. Are you saying you like the idea? No, I just think it's stupid and suicidal. Sadistic to have children right now. Ah, uh, come on! What child wouldn't want to grow up in a world like this? And listen, pal, I know your name is Shades, but wearing them indoors at night is a serious douche move. Meanwhile, the junk dealer learns more about the robot parts Moses sold him. Fun fact, in the future, all robots will use old Game Genie cheat codes. Government funding to the Mark 13 project is currently under suspension due to minor problems with the prototype's insulation system. Currently susceptible to high levels of moisture and humidity. Oh hey, this is kind of like Gunhead, except, you know, this this movie's actually good. Better call Moses over to take a look at this thing. See these mighty buildings, all shall be thrown down, shattered, splintered, split. The earth will shake, rattle, and roll. The masses will go hungry, their bellies bloat. Damn it, Mo! you can read Marilyn Manson lyrics later. Right now you need to take a look at the robot. He does end up leaving Jill alone in her apartment with the head, but in any case, the robot's still less creepy than this guy. Look, I wanna come back. I'm ready to go again. I'm hard again just thinking about you, baby. I'm so hard, I could cut diamonds, huh? What do you say we try it up the ass, huh? Huh. I always wondered what the Ring video would have been like if it was produced by Larry Flint. Okay, let's see what else is on. Get right on down to Reno's for your radiation-free reindeer steaks. Hurry while stocks last. Wait, so in the future all TV is just stuff I'd normally feature on my show? Bad news, Jill. Not only is the Mark 13's head still active, but it also builds itself a new body from the shit you've got lying around your apartment. I told you you should have stuck with watercolors. Also, the parts back at the junk dealer are still active too. Design for hey, hey, what the condition. fuck? Jeez, this is like if Ash's replacement hand from Army of Darkness also ended up getting possessed. Well, the Mark 13 may have reactivated and repaired itself, but on the plus side, the lighting in Jill's apartment is immaculate. Now before I go any further, I should probably address the elephant in the room regarding this movie. No, no, I already mentioned him. Plus, he's really more of a warthog. What I'm talking about is the fact that the plot to this movie is... kind of plagiarized. The movie supposedly took from a story that originally appeared in the British comics magazine 2000 AD, which is famous for being where the character Judge Dredd first appeared. The story, called Shock, involves a man giving his girlfriend an old robot head as a present, which proceeds to rebuild itself and terrorize her in her apartment, and... yeah, that is pretty similar. The publishers of the comic thought so too and sued for plagiarism, and later releases of the movie include a credit to the authors. Okay, so the movie likely took from the 2000 AD story, but if you think that automatically makes it bad, I'm gonna offer up a counter-argument. 
RoboCop is considered by many to be a classic, but what a lot of people don't know is that this was what RoboCop's original design was supposed to be. Look familiar? Well, it should, since it's basically Judge Dredd. Even with the redesign, RoboCop's appearance and no-nonsense demeanor with criminals still owe a ton to the Judge Dredd character, and the makers of RoboCop even flat-out admitted the movie was strongly influenced by Judge Dredd. So there's another case where a movie borrowed heavily from a 2000 AD comic, but you're never gonna catch me saying RoboCop's a shitty movie. Looks like Moses didn't get there in time to prevent the Mark 13 from killing the junk dealer. Moses seems... really tore up about his death. Once Moses learns the Mark 13 is reactivated, he calls Shades to check in on Jill. But he's too busy practicing his tantric masturbation technique. Jill is in trouble. You gotta help her. This is serious, man. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Right, right now it's kind of... Wait, is that what he's doing? Hmm, either the Mark 13 is going to attack Jill, or it's about to play a Sega CD game. It's a little hard to tell. Well, so far this is way better than Corpse Killer. Um, okay, I guess it's gone now. Phew, Jill was saved by the editor. However, not only does the robot trap Jill inside her apartment, but he also blocks Fatso's view of her. You better go over and fix that. Hi. Okay, Jill, bit of advice. If you open your door and see this, stick with the killer robot. No! It's gone! It's okay. Who are you? Lincoln Weinberg Jr. You can call me Lincoln. He tells people to call him Link, not because his name is Lincoln, but because he only eats Jimmy Dean Link sausages. What? Makes sense to me. This actor did play a character called Porkins, after all. Link offers to help Jill fix up her door so she can get out of her apartment, although personally I wouldn't trust this guy to fix up anything other than some pigs in a blanket. And I don't know about his advice, either. You smoke a lot of dope. Gee, thanks, Mom. What if I sing? You want me to sing? Uh, no thanks, that's okay. Oh, we all walk the wibberly wobberly walk. And we all talk the wibberly wobberly talk. Oh, we all wear wibberly wobberly ties. And we look at all the pretty girls with wibberly wobberly eyes. This guy is what happens when Jimmy Buffett fans finally do too much coke. I want to make two things very clear to you right now. One, there is no other way out of here. So that means that droid is still in here somewhere. And two... You just want me to leave. Ah, uh, come on! Why would she possibly want you to leave? Even if he does manage to open the door, just where the hell did the Mark 13 go? Oh, shit. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that this guy dies. It is usually what happens to this actor in movies. This movie probably should have came with a seizure warning, but again, it does look cool. You know, I just realized the Mark 13 kind of looks like a meth-addicted trailer trash version of the Terminator. Jill figures out the Mark 13 sees an infrared and hides in her fridge. No need for that, though, since the robot can barely see shit anyway. Also, I think he's got a really bad craving for some lactoplasm right about now. You better hurry up and and check on her shades. Okay, never mind. I guess she'll just take care of it herself. Great work, Shades. You didn't even get to Jill's apartment until Moses was almost back there. If he had just left right away instead of wasting time calling you, he probably could have gotten there sooner. In the meantime, though, it looks like it's up to Jill to go straight up Linda Hamilton on this motherfucker. Congratulations, Jill, you took care of the robot. However, this does mean you won't be getting your damage deposit on this place back now. Wait a second, though. Usually in a sci-fi horror movie, the monster doesn't die the first time around. Hey, what the hell are you guys doing? I compared the movie to The Terminator earlier, not Predator. I got him! Okay, relax, Moses. There's still 25 minutes left. 
Hey, so I checked on her like you said. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to jerking off. Later. Jill also theorizes that the Mark 13 isn't just a military robot, but actually a new form of population control. Wouldn't it just be easier to give out free vasectomies? There's a lot of guys out there who'd like to fuck without condoms, you know? Oh, and remember how I said in horror movies the monster usually doesn't die the first time around? <laughs> That also goes for the second time around, too. At this point, I think the Mark 13's just angry and messed up his paint job. He's a Patriot first and a killer robot second, after all. Ah, <laughs> yeah, she's probably fine. Well, that does it. Nobody kills the only attractive woman left after the apocalypse if Mo has anything to say about it. First, though, Dylan McDermott has to pose for the movie's poster artwork. And I know I've already said this, but it bears repeating how well this movie manages to use its low budget. Seriously, this only cost one and a half million, yet they spent millions just to get rid of Henry Cavill's fucking mustache in Justice League? <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Mark 13. Don't fuck with the Jesus or the Moses. Wait a second. Before he shot it, the Mark 13 managed to stick him with its hallucinogenic poison, which means Mo is probably gonna be tripping balls in a second here. Which is actually pretty appropriate for this movie. And what the hell? You mean Jill really is still alive? I was just kidding earlier. The monster's supposed to come back to life after you think it's dead, not the heroin. Speaking of heroin, Mo seems to really be chasing the dragon hard right about now. No! I think I figured out why this movie copied that 2000 AD story. Someone printed out some high-powered blotter acid on the comic, and then Richard Stanley licked all of the pages before he wrote this. Listen, Jill, Moe's already dead. There's no need to go back into your apartment. <laughs> okay, seriously, you're definitely not getting your damage deposit back. Get the fuck out of there. Now, this next part of the movie's a little weird. Well, okay, weird-er. Jill makes it back into her apartment and... hacks into the Mark 13 and starts talking to it? You know, at this point, I think the movie just wants you to go along for the ride, and honestly, I ain't arguing. If you really want to get rid of this thing, just find an industrial press to crush it with. <laughs> Or just hit it with a bat. That works too, I guess. Hang on, didn't they mention the Mark 13 had a weakness earlier? Due to minor problems with the prototype's insulation system. Currently susceptible to high levels of moisture and humidity. Ah, so the robot can be defeated by water. Okay, that was a pretty lame weakness for the aliens in Signs, but for a robot? Eh, kinda makes sense. Jill is really lucky your place came with a shower. Judging by the beginning, it looked like bathing didn't survive the apocalypse. Unfortunately, Jill picked a bad month to be late paying her utility bills. And damn it, Shades, are you actually gonna do anything in this movie? Hi. Well, Jill's fucked. If the army really did design the Mark 13 for population control, then why the hell did they equip it with a spinning robot dick? Shoot it! Okay, Shades, this is your chance to actually do something. Try not to fuck it up. Shoot it! <laughs> you know what? Just go back to your apartment and jerk off again. Oh well, at least that made Jill turn on the shower. No, oh, I like to have my morning dump before I shower. My morning routine is ruined. Even though hitting it with the bat probably didn't do anything, given how many times this thing's come back, I don't blame Jill for being thorough. Now, we haven't heard from Iggy Pop in a while, but luckily, they killed the Mark 13 just in time for his morning sequel bait show. We got some good news this morning from Fair Isle Electronics. The Defense Department has just given them the go-ahead to mass-produce the new Mark 13 Cyborg. Eh, I wouldn't get your hopes up. Considering how long ago this came out, I don't think we're going to be getting a sequel anytime soon. Unless they pull a Mad Max and Blade Runner and make one decades later. Which, considering the direction Hollywood seems to be moving in... Eh, that could actually happen. 
Despite the issues with the MPAA, hardware was still a modest success, making almost four times its budget back. However, critics were a lot less kind to it, but over time it's gone on to have a cult following. It's easy to see why, since Richard Stanley seems determined to make sure his cyberpunk debut feature highlighted the punk part of that description. Yeah, yeah, I know, the 2000 AD story. But even though this movie definitely takes ideas from several different sources, like the Terminator and Alien, Richard Stanley still manages to put his own stamp on it. The movie's no masterpiece by any means, and it is largely a case of style over substance since there isn't a whole lot of plot here, but hey, at least the style's nice. To give you a comparison, this is much more accomplished than James Cameron's first full-length movie, which, remember, wasn't The Terminator, it was Piranha 2 The Spawning. After Hardware, Richard Stanley went on to direct Dust Devil, which also went on to develop a cult following. But after the Dr. Moreau debacle, he's mostly stuck to documentaries, although he did make that segment in the theater bazaar where the guy fucks a frog monster. Rumor has it he's planning to make a comeback with an adaptation of the H.P. Lovecraft story The Color Out of Space, which I think could be be a great project for him. Just make sure you credit the original story this time. Well, that's all for now, but 2019 is just getting started. This year I plan to highlight some more big budget cult movies, some black exploitation, maybe a Bollywood movie, and yes, more Godzilla. Until next time. Bad, bad androids anywhere. Yeah,